This is John McQuay with 8541 Tactical. We're out here at the range today to talk about monopods. Here with us today, we've got an AccuShot monopod. I think this is one of the most misunderstood tools in the shooting industry. We get questions all the time, which is better, a monopod or a rear bag? Well, the answer is they're both tools that do their job in a slightly different way. So knowing what those strengths and weaknesses are will allow you to better choose which one is for you. Now the reason that I say the monopod is misunderstood is because a lot of shooters seem to believe that they're more for bench shooting or for hard surfaces and they deploy them exactly like it's set here. They'll just simply flip it out, dial it in to where they need it, lock it down and then they'll shoot. Now if you're on a concrete surface or a carpeted bench or a hardwood bench that's fine because when, when the rifle recoils, it'll stay on the same elevation of the monopod versus the front legs of the bipod. Nothing's going to sink in, nothing's going to change their relationship. When you're shooting on a gravel surface, or mud, or grass, then every time you fire that rifle, each contact point is going to sink in at a different rate. So the monopod, because it's taking a lot of the backward pressure of the recoil, may sink in quicker than the bipod feet. If you have softer soil under the bipod feet, they may sink in quicker. The basic idea is it's going to necessitate an adjustment in elevation every time you fire the rifle. Now, if every time you have to fire the rifle, you have to come down here and dial your monopod down or up, that is going to take some time. It's not going to be conductive to firing a timed course. And people see that and decide, oh, well, I'll just go with a sandbag for my rear support because with the sandbag all I have to do is squeeze it or let it down to adjust my elevation. They can drag it from side to side without it getting sunk in to adjust for tracking targets or from going from target to target. Well you can do the very same thing with a monopod. All you need to do is instead of locking the monopod out like it is here, hit the release button bring it back out of its lock, and then reach back and grab a hold of it like a handle. Now what you're doing is your hand is locking the monopod in at the height it needs to be. If I need to engage a high target, I just bring it down a little bit. If I need to engage a lower target, then I'll push it back up. You get your gross adjustment by setting the length, and then you get your fine adjustment by setting the angle that the monopod's at. This is very fast and it's very easy. You don't have to worry about sinking into the surface because your hand gives you a whole lot broader surface area for the rifle to sit on. Now, Obviously when you do this, if you're not on a nice soft surface like a shooting mat, you're going to want to make sure you put a glove on that hand, otherwise you're going to start tearing things up. But this works extremely well, it's extremely fast. That's the strength of the monopod. You don't have to worry about where it's at when you stow it, it's always on the rifle. The rear bag, you've got to do something with it. Either it has to hang off the rifle and then it's going to swing back and forth and bounce around, or you have to put it in a pack and fish it out whenever you need it. It still has a purpose. I like the way rear bags feel, but a monopod is very fast, it's very simple to use, and it's on the rifle all the time. Now that gives you an idea of which one may be better for you.
If you've enjoyed the review video today, please click the subscription button above. More subscribers means we can bring you more videos. Thank you.